the web. Okay. And so there are plenty of things we don't see, but we have evidence for believing that they exist. If we could develop a good way to... It's not so much that it's loud music, it's just the worst music that they keep playing. <laughs> you notice that? Can we get some good Smash Mouth in here sometime, please? A way of, like, documenting, talking with atheists, because what we're using is, like, um, a non-confrontational approach to talk about deep beliefs that doesn't turn the conversation to an argument or a debate. And, um, I've watched you, and, and you, you don't debate. You you interview very well. Thank you, thank you. I you appreciate that. You ask very good questions. Thank you so much. I really appreciate it. And so the method's called street epistemology, and um, it, it doesn't necessarily go as long with someone who has a very reasonable base. But <laughs> sure. when they, like, I guess say, I'm done. <laughs> <laughs> when they say that, hey, I believe in aliens, or like I believe that I was visited by UFOs, or that God talks to me in my left ear, or something like that. It, it keeps it's the right, the right here. We can, we can. There's a way to have that conversation, get to the foundation, and then come back up from the foundation, and, and then the other person is much less confident in that position because they exercise some critical thinking. And all the method is is just a chance to give someone a chance to think about what they believe. Would you mind if I did that with you? That's fine. I imagine you're an atheist already. No, I'm not an atheist. You're not an atheist? No. Okay. What? 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 <laughs> Since we're on a curve already, huh? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Go. Show me what you got. Show me what you got. All right. So. uh Hi, I'm Ty. That's me. Hi, Ty, I'm Danny. Danny? Yeah. Danny? Danny, what brought you over here? Well, I, uh, I'm here to interact and talk with people who are part of the... We're not part of the protest. We came here to talk with people who are. Okay. So we're kind of doing the same thing you're doing. Fantastic. I love this thing. Okay, so then would you say that you are religious or anything like that? I'm a Christian. You mind if we just, like, skip all the intros and all that sure. stuff and just, yeah. like, talk about the faith? And if sure. you want to talk about my... Lack of faith, I'd, I'd love that too. That's fine. I want to have the best way sure. of coming to a conclusion as well. So, which God are we talking about and how? Y Yahweh, the God of the Bible. Yahweh, and the God Jew of the Bible? And Jesus Christ. Okay. Who is Emmanuel, God with us. Okay. Do you have a specific denomination that you represent or that you believe got the most accurate perspective? Well, I, 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 I guess I'm Baptist in my beliefs. I belong to a Baptist church. But, uh, uh, Labels tend to, and denominations tend to divide us many times. We have I think so as well. We have distincts that we believe, and, mm. uh, and the, the real essential doctrines uh, I, I share with many other people, Presbyterians, Methodists, and so forth. Okay, okay. There's definitely a lot of overlap, sure. but it's good to know, like, exactly, how do I put it? Because there are groups that believe in slightly different things, sure. it'd be nice to know where you're coming from. Absolutely. Like. That's good to know. Okay, so uh, I guess then, what is the reason that you believe in this God, if you don't want me asking? Well, I, I think the Bible is in God's inspired word. I think he is the one true God. Uh, it, it does have certain elements of faith to that, I understand. Um, I do believe it's a reasonable faith. You know, faith is not believing in your heart what your mind finds to be absurd. Okay. But believing in your heart what your mind finds to be reasonable. You know, the writer of Hebrews defined uh, faith as the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. How would you define faith? I think the same way. Substance of things hoped for, evidence of things not seen. I, it's not complete knowledge, but it's enough knowledge that a reasonable person can can believe these things. It's not a leap in the, a leap of, uh, in the dark like some people seem to think that it is. Okay, so you say evidence of things... And, and, all, and all, people, all people have faith. I mean, evidence of things unseen, you said? That's from Hebrews, the book of Hebrews. Mm -hmm. uh, evidence of things hoped for, uh, a subs substance of things hoped for, evidence of things not seen. Can I ask you how confident you are in this God existing based on this Pretty method confident. that you're using? Near 100%. Near 100? I, not 100%. You're at least open minded. I, I, I'm open minded, I do believe. And I have, look, I'm human. I have doubts from time to time. That's right. And that's, uh, anybody that says they have no doubts, they're fooling, they're fooling themselves. Clemson fans? <laughs> Well, maybe less down there. You know there. them with the rattlesnakes and being like, yeah, we like the, the tigers. tigers, yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. We see those little red rattlesnake right. things that they got on. Anyway, I'm just playing. So, um, because you're using, um, could you tell me like the most reasonable method that you're used to get to that high confidence? And is it faith? Oh, well, I think scripture itself is is consistent. I mean, people today are arguing that it's not, that there are there are difficulties one can see in the Bible, but those there are answers and resolutions to those. I think it's a consistent message from the beginning to the end, the okay. revelation of God to mankind over time. Uh, the people early on didn't know everything that God wanted to reveal because God chose not to do that. I think it's a consistent message, and I find that compelling. Do you think something that's consistent is a reasonable way to get to a conclusion? Yeah, I think consistency has to be there. If you don't have a consistent system or a consistent set of beliefs, then then that's problematic. Okay. 
Can I throw something out at you? Yeah. This might be, and I want you to critique yeah, it sure. as I go. But if I had a coin, it's mm -hmm. not a trick coin, it's just a quarter. I flip it, catch it, it's on the back of my hand. I don't know if it's heads or tails. Do you know if it's heads or tails? No. We both don't know. Yeah. That might be the best answer for at least right now. Right. But I can keep saying it's heads. I can consistently <laughs> write down a thousand books that it's heads. I can have this guy, this guy, this guy, everyone say it's heads. Does that make it any more likely to be heads? No. What does consistency have to do with the, the actual matter? Well, the that, 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 I don't mean consistency in the sense of people agreeing with something. I'm talking about a consistent message throughout. A consistent, um, non-self-contradictory non sort of message is what I'm talking we about. We can all non-contradictory agree that this is heads well, that, instead of You're talking message. about a hypothetical, though, at this point. Which Are hypotheticals allowed to be questioned? Or like, are hypotheticals a good way to like figure out things? Oh, yeah, it can okay. be. It's, so it's, it's, it's in, this aspect, in this aspect, as a tool... What it, what's but, the, but, what's but, the correlation between the but, but it's a hypothetical based upon uh, no knowledge whatsoever? Mm. I mean, you have no knowledge of the coin. So. so knowledge is better than consistency, maybe. <laughs> they go hand in hand. They don't, okay, they're, not, okay. they're not contradictory to one another. Shouldn't be. So what's like the what is like the real fundamental like reason? If it's not consistency, then like if I could be consistent. Well, I think what you're getting like, what you're getting down true. to is the is the is the question of truth. Yeah. Like and how do you and, determine and, that's and true? Tr and truth is true whether. I recognize it or not, whether I believe it or not, yeah. something isn't true because I believe it, like the flip of your coin. Or if it's consistently something, said. Something is true because it's true. Right. And my 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 attempt is to conform what I believe mm. to truth. Okay. And I think I think again, it's 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 it may seem foreign to some from outside, but I do believe the Bible is God's revelation to man. Not a problem. And there. So, so consequently, that is truth. It's propositional truth. It is truth whether I believe it to be true or you believe it or anybody else believes it, it is true. So and what that, I'm wondering there's, there's an element of faith there coming in. For sure. sure. I'm wondering um like what's a good method to get other people to test that and determine if it's true or not. Testing the Bible or no, testing faith, testing No, God? just like, trusting testing things in the hopes of determining if it's true or not. Like someone could say it's true. I could say it's heads. Yeah. But what's a good way for me to well, test you have to, to, see if you that's have to true. look and see if it's true? I mean, if, if, take your hand off so we can see that what it's a head or tails. Just making sure you said I have to look and make sure to see yeah. if it's true. But faith is based on evidence of things unseen. Yeah. Okay. Substance of things hoped for, evidence of things not seen. But you see, you can still have evidence of things without seeing those things. Okay. I mean, I've never seen an electron. No one's ever seen an electron, but I think most of us here believe electrons exist. I've never seen the wind. There's plenty of wind today, but I can't see it. I can see the effects of the wind. Okay. And so there are plenty of things we don't see, but we have evidence for believing that they exist. If we could develop a good way to... It's not so much that it's loud music, it's just the worst music that they keep playing. <laughs> you notice that? Can we get some good Smash Mouth in here sometime, please? I'm from California. Anyway, uh, so I can't see wind, but I can do tests that are pretty reliable for me to determine the presence of wind. And I'm totally fine with those. Uh, I can't see an individual electron, but we can make enough of an arc of electrons where you can see it. Absolutely. We can do I, tests. I, I have a physics background, so nice, I, I nice. understand the... ISA. Good. Good on you, man. Yeah. So I'm wondering then, what's a good test that we could do to determine like the presence of a god? And I'm open to if it okay, exists, uh, but I'm wondering like what's I, a good I, test? I, I, I think one of the arguments I like to use is the um, the complexity of life, for instance. Okay. I um, I looked at this last night, and I should have brought it with me today, and I did not. But I have an arrowhead, a couple of them at home, and. Um, my mom used to talk about finding arrowheads when they would, would, they would plow in the spring and, and uh, thought it was way cool. I was like archaeology and history and all that kind of good stuff. Yeah. So um, where I used to live in South Carolina, I had some, I some, am, man. some, some good friends of mine who uh, had some property with the, out in the country where they did, frequently found arrowheads in the spring when they, when they plowed. So I went out there and I walked for an hour and a half looking at, in the morning and in, in the, in the, that afternoon looking. I pick up a rock. It wasn't. Pick up another rock. After about an hour and a half, I found one. And I was very overjoyed. I finally found one of my own. I could buy them, but now I got one. I found. Nice. I uh, decided to walk back towards the house with this fellow with me. We walked about 10 feet, and I found a second one. <laughs> Just like that. Okay. Um, now, the question is, how did I know I had an arrowhead when I found it? Okay. Uh, and, and, did you want me to answer? Yeah, or? go ahead. Oh. Yeah, yeah. They have a very distinctive look. Mm -hmm. They've been cut by people, and we have other ones that we can compare them to uh -huh. and say, hey, here's an arrowhead that's been made. Here's another arrowhead I found. They share some of the consistency. The type of rock that it was, it obviously had been shaped. It had been I'm totally formed. Fine with that. Oh, it no, had, I'm so sorry. It had, it had been designed, obviously. Somebody made it. Yeah. 
And uh, no, and we one, know that by comparing it to things that aren't. Designed. Right. And, and no one, no one would 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 pick up that rock and seriously argue. Well, it just weathered that way. No, it's a natural process. We are we in agreement that we know that it was designed by comparing to things that are not designed. Like here's an arrowhead that looks like it was designed yeah, compared to a rock I, that's I so. not yeah. designed. So my point is, is many people, everybody can hold that arrow. <laughs> Everybody can hold that the arrowhead. The last thing in I want to do is pollute. People, yeah, people so can sorry. hold that arrowhead in their hands and marvel at the the, the, the design mm -hmm. in that rock, and yet at the same time they're missing the design in the hand that holds it. Can I tell you a really quick funny story? Yeah. I accidentally left my marker outside without the cap on, so I can't record. <laughs> I can't record anything, anything. here. <laughs> so I would be using that if I could. So instead, I'm using pencil and paper. Bad, like bad design. Oh, in your seat. In your it's seat. under my seat? Oh, thanks. Bad thanks. design. Anyway, I'm so sorry to interrupt. That's fine. Anyway. anyway, so the point is the hand is an incredibly designed thing. The uh, circulatory system, the musculature, the, 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 the biochemistry going on, it's just a part of the body. And any every living organism is incredibly complex. 150 years ago, people thought that cells were pretty simple. We now understand it's the other way around. The cells are what's really complex. Mm. Uh, and what's going on is, is unbelievable. And its complexity is infinitely greater than that of a rock. Would you say that complexity? But, they, but, is, but, but, the, but the point is. Oh, sorry, sorry, sorry. There is incredible design <laughs> in living living creatures, and so well, to me to look at living creatures, me, you, the plants around us, the birds flying overhead, I cannot believe it's really awesome, isn't that it? this happened by itself without any design, without any designer, without a creator. So I think creation itself screams out that there is a God. Mind, tell you mind if I just catch up? Yeah. Mind if I just catch up? Yeah. Just trying to catch up. Um, so. I was asking for like a good way to test if something was true. Mm -hmm. With as, um, well, I guess we're using the God as the basis on this. Yeah. God of Yahweh, specific God. Um, you said that based on the complexity of things that are like alive or like the world, basically how complex it is, is proof to you that a God exists. I'm wondering, is complexity a good? Is a is complexity a good a sign of design? For example, if I had a light bulb that took one step to screw into a hole and make a light in my room, or a light bulb that took 40,000 steps to screw into a hole and make the same amount of light, which light bulb was better designed? Well, the first one, I think. <laughs> it seems to be that simplicity yeah. is the hallmark of design, not complexity. So then why is com why do you look at something that's very complex and say, oh, a brilliant designer but, must have made that? But you're only, you're only looking at one feature of the light bulb. But, the, the least important, really, the light bulb itself is highly designed. You've got True, but a more simple one would be better than a highly complex well, one. Well, a simple one in the sense of... If they do the exact same thing. Well, why would you want to screw the thing 40,000 times to yeah, go Yeah, who in? cares what it's, I want? It's, it's, make it's a question sense. of the design of yeah. the aspect. It seems that we like to... We yeah. tend to stay away from really complex things. We well, want faster well, cars not that just, you... Just comp the problem is uh, complexity and is is oftentimes and I will admit this in the eye of the beholder mm. uh, I don't see any advantage to to one that takes forever to, put, to screw in yeah one like, that, one it seems like we like simple textiles we want smaller phones we want more efficient cars we tend to run away from complexity well no no no, no, no more, more efficient things. cars are not not simpler. I can make them way more complex by adding a bunch of extra well, moving parts well, to them that they don't what, need. I have a 60 year old car at home yeah and I can work in it very easily that's totally fine. But, I can but, make but that I, car way I'm, more complex I'm, if I'm, I worked I'm on it. About, I'm not about to work on that car I drove up here today. Yeah, because but, it's good as it is. Why did right? I why did I drive it? Well, it gets like three times the mileage the uh, other car gets. Yeah, and and it and also it has uh, twice the mileage that the other car had before it before it needed major engine work, and, and so on we go. And if I went to your car and I tried to put in an extra engine. You say it doesn't need an extra engine. It's already good enough. It's, it's good a, as it's, it is. It's already designed. Don't make it more it's complex. It's already designed very, very well. Totally I think, fine. I think, I think we've gotten a far foot here. The design and complexity are not the same thing. But, True. But but, but they it are seems related. like we they don't like. They it seems related. that complexity is not the hallmark of design. It's simplicity that's the hallmark of design. Not always. No. no. Okay. There are okay. many. There are many systems that are very complex and they have to be that way in order to work. If there are some some, some designs are very simple. Oh yeah, designs. definitely. A slingshot is a simple, simple design. If there are some cases where it can be simple and better, and some places where it can be complex and better, then it doesn't seem and, like and complexity we, is and, the and, best way well, to look again, at that. Again, it's not so much complexity as it is design we're talking about here. Designed to do certain things. I'm totally fine with yeah. that. I'm totally fine. I'm just saying that in some cases it seems where simplicity is better. Some cases maybe complexity is better. I would better. agree. How do you know which one's better? I mean, in the case where either of them can be better, yeah. is it at looking at something that's really complex saying, Proof. No, again, How again that you, keep, one you, keep, you keep going to, to complexity, and I keep talking about design. They're two different, 
I okay. Mean, they're, not, they're related, but not the same thing. Let's go to design then, because right. it seems like complexity doesn't matter as much then. Let's talk yeah. about design. Yeah. I can pair things that are designed with things that are not designed. Mm -hmm. That's how I recognize something that's been designed. I can take that arrowhead, compare it to a rock that's not an arrowhead. Say, this looks like it's been crafted. That looks like it's not crafted. Yeah. What are you comparing against something that's not designed for you to come to the argument that it was God that made well, living, living things as opposed to non-living things. Did God not make living, non-living things? He made both, yeah. Okay, so it didn't even design both? Yes. How do you recognize design then? In, in rocks? Not as easily. It's not What's a good easy. way to determine that? That's a tricky question. I think so yeah. too. Okay. What would you say then is, if maybe we can like move away from that, what's like another way to test the presence of a God? Well, I guess you're trying to go in a different direction you're talking no, about? No, I guess, I mean, like, no. I feel like we talked about complexity, we talked all about right, design. All right. What's another way but, that but, we can but, test? But, but I want to make one point, though. Oh, please, that, please, that, please. Um, I want to be very clear that, that uh, the, the design in the world around us leads us to believe, I think a reasonable person to believe that there's a creator. It doesn't follow that that creator is the creator, uh, the, the God I've identified, Yahweh, the God of the Bible. It just tells you there is a creator. We, we cannot, I don't think, from nature itself determine who that God is. From nature itself, we really can't determine the, the characteristics or the properties or the, uh, of, of, that, of that God. Oh, that's interesting. When, then, what got you to the Christian God? Pardon? What got you to the Christian God, then? Uh, scripture. Oh, okay. I, I believe that Scripture, again, is the revelation we have. Just asking you a different question. And, and, and there's, again, faith involved in that. And, I, you know, ask me to prove that Scripture is true. I, I don't care about that. Scri scripture doesn't even, doesn't even try to do that. It simply says, this is this is God's Word. Take it take it or leave it. There's a much more interesting conversation. Right. And, like I said, I'm, my goal isn't even really to change your mind. Right. It's just, can we work together two different ideas, two different backgrounds from the same side of the table, um, talking to the table. Can we come up with a method that's maybe a little bit better to convince someone who's like me or like things like me, oh, here's actually a really good method to like show that these points that you're articulating actually have like a reasonable basis behind them. And I think we can work together on that. Right. I'm wondering, it seems like, is, could you believe in your God without faith? No, I don't think that's possible. Okay, could we talk about faith then for sure. a little bit? Yeah. I think you defined it already from like the biblical sense, but like, do you have a personal definition that is meaningful to you? Like, well, I think, what does that speak well, to you? Well, I, think, I think I gave that to you earlier. I said it's, it's believing in your heart what your mind finds to be, to be reasonable. That's I need my, to write that down. That's my own. I'm sorry it's if not, I'm taking It's not it. original to me, but I'll... <laughs> I want to put that up on a wall, okay. like with one of those like, believing like, woodcut in your... fonts. <laughs> believe it, believe it. I, 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 I learned this from a college professor 45 years ago. Can you say that again? Uh, Just while, while I'm faith listening? Faith is believing in your heart. In your heart. What your fi mind finds to be reasonable. What your mind finds to be reasonable. Okay. All right. <gasps> Whoa. <laughs> the important people are starting to show up. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I thought we were already here. I must be Ken's new ride with all the tax dollars. Oh, he's going the other way. Oh, no, he's going the wrong way. I just knew a fantastic joke about a limousine that got, like, T-sectioned. But it's, it became an arrow. I, I, don't know. It, I don't know the I don't know the basis of the joke. It's a funny joke. It was an empty limousine. Everyone's walked out. Everyone was fine. Anyway, sorry, sorry. Okay, so I, believing, think, I think it's a joke. But go ahead. <laughs> I did. It, I did. It. I'm not good. Anyway, uh, believing in your heart, what your mind finds to be oh, now reasonable. I get it. Oh, now I get it. Okay. You get it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So sure. now, now I get back it. to the camera. All you right. got a limousine. It gets the intersection. <laughs> it becomes an arrow. Right, I didn't get it from in my head. Long it's long hilarious. Long I just haven't like figured out the words around. I was it yet. thinking I like of a, of a envelope. I was thinking picture. of a Pierce arrow. A what? A Pierce arrow, an automobile they haven't made for about seventy-five yeah, or eighty yeah, years. Yeah. <laughs> it was uh -huh. a car from back in the thirties. Okay, okay, okay. Anyway, we're up there with the doozy. Would you mind telling me about uh, believing in your heart, what your mind finds to be yeah. reasonable? What and you, you can about? change this. Sure. Yeah. Um, how is that a reliable way to come to a true conclusion? About what? I, I guess. I'm... About anything. About anything. Uh, I guess I'm not sure what, exactly what you're asking. I, I'm, I'm, Flip that coin, yeah. catch it. Right now, we both don't know. Oh, okay. Goes. That, that, in, that, in that particular case, but I could believe in my heart what my mind finds to be reasonable, uh, and at this well, moment, no, no, I could but, reasonably but that, find but, that it's heads. But, but, but not having any knowledge whatsoever. I know it could be heads or tails. You know, that's all you know. But, I know quarters but because of the way how the face is on one side and the eagles on the background but it's, but it's, has a slight proportional but, chance but to be more not, heads. But it's not that's reasonable. I reason to get there. But it's not reasonable in your in your mind 
to say that it's one or the other. You can say yeah. it's one. You can say it's one or the other, but you can't yeah. say definitely it's I, it's a. Until I have a better way to examine that. Yeah. So, could I use faith to get to a conclusion that one's heads and one's or one tails? Uh, faith in this particular case, but I mean, I, I, I guess I don't see the application coming in this particular simple case. Sure, but could I use faith to come to the conclusion that it's heads right no, now? No, I don't, I don't say you could. Ah, this is interesting then. So there are certain things that I can have faith about and certain things that I can't have faith about. Is that, is that more accurate? Well, again, a priori, a priori deciding that it's heads is not a reasonable thing to believe mm. even if I had a reasonable I, even if I believed it with my heart and had a no, reasonable no, that's, that's not the mind. point I mean you're, you're wanting to put you want to put faith ahead of, of your mind mm. in that case and the two go together I'm not saying that the mind has to go first or that faith has to go second or first or whatever mm. but the two have to be hand in hand with one another you can't you can't say that one then preempts the other okay they work together so even if I had a hundred percent faith on something but I wasn't using my mind that's not a reliable way to come to a conclusion on something Can I say that again if I use only faith to come to a conclusion that's not good enough I need to have I, other aspects I th again, with the way I've defined faith personally, yeah, that'd be, that'd be a problem. Okay, okay, yeah. cool. If I had faith that was telling me something, but my mind was telling me something else, what should I rely on more? <laughs> uh, well, I actually deal with those kind of questions all the time, and I sort through them. It's not an easy you know, three-step three process. I can't say, well, you do this, 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 and this. No, I can't do that. I'd love to know about the process. Well, I said it, it doesn't have a simple one. Uh, <laughs> so, there's no simple three-step process. Sorry, I forgot to start the timer. <laughs> That's okay. <laughs> Uh, there's no simple three-step process I can give I you. It's a, it's a, you know, thinking yeah. is not easy. Most people think that it is, mm -hmm. but it isn't. It's a, it's a very laborious process. Critical thinking, yeah. Uh, critical thinking is. Yeah. And uh, I've changed I've changed my mind about a lot of things. In the last three years, I've changed some, my, my mind about some some big things. Mm. Uh, and and uh, I will continue to do so. Can I throw something out? Yeah. And I'm asking. I'm not. I'm not telling. I'm legitimately asking. I hope you're having a good time in this chat. Absolutely. Cool. Um, I get it and walk away if I didn't. <laughs> and I'm laughing too, so I'm still happy. Cool. <laughs> you're asking some great questions, by the thank way. You, and thank you. Thank you. I appreciate that. I'm wondering, and I, and I appreciate your attitude. Thanks, man. I'm wondering what's a good way to come to a true conclusion. That's really what I care about the most. Mm. In the event that I don't have, in the event that I'm using a method that's not good to determine if something's true or not true, yeah. I'm happy to dismiss it if I have a better method. Or if I can find yeah. something better. And again, there's not a simple process. Look, I think, I think if you had 100% faith in something, uh -huh. but you had like something else in your mind telling you the opposite, and you have to laboriously think about it, and maybe sometimes come to the position that your mind had, is that not a demonstration that maybe even if you have 100% faith in something, that that thing may not be worth your uh, worth endeavoring as a true people thing. people call that a crisis of faith that happens to some people okay they, they are confronted with something that they find incompatible with their faith could i ever have faith in something that's not true sure if i can have faith in things that are true and things that are not true what's the value of faith for well, determining if something is true or not? everybody has faith not saying that i'm no. not i'm not even tackling every, that every, point. everybody has faith not only tackling that point but i'm wondering yeah, as a method to determine if something's true or not if I got faith in things that are not true and faith that things mm -hmm. are true, what does having faith do as a means towards getting to a true conclusion? Well, faith is part of of the way we think and operate. I mean, there there are people here today who who believe science is the way to find find all truth. That's a faith statement. They they believe that to be true, even though they can't prove that hmm. to be true. How do you feel about I don't know? as an answer when you don't have enough oh the years I taught I use that answer all the time so what I my position <laughs> all the right time now, I would say I don't know about this when I didn't know the answer and, and when I thought I knew the answer yeah I, and then I was confident but I, I'm not afraid to say I don't know and there are a lot of things I would I, love I to give to. you my system sure. and get some feedback from you all right, all right. my idea is like with that coin like with anything if I don't have enough evidence to support the conclusion mm -hmm. I'm willing to say I don't know yeah. until I have better evidence sure Agreed. Because I can have faith in things that are true and not true, I don't see it as a useful system to determine if something is true. And what I'm looking for is a useful system to determine if something's true or not. What do you think about that? Well, again, I think you're. I think hidden somewhere in your reasoning there is that some people have faith, some people don't have faith. 
And I think that's wrong. Everybody has faith. Let's say I did have yeah. faith, but right. I still don't value it as a decision-making process tool to come to a true conclusion. All right, and that's fine. Uh, but you have to have... If you like, up, I'm definitely capable if, if you, of if, believing in my heart what my fi mind finds reasonable, right. but I don't value that as a good way to get to a true conclusion. No, but, but the thing is, you, 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 if you come up with your method, your surefire method of, of, of discerning truth, you have to have faith that that method works. Do I? I think so. Yeah. Other, otherwise, why would you trust your system to do that? Would I use My point faith? is, everybody has faith at some level. They may deny it. In fact, the more they deny it, the more convinced <laughs> I'm sure that they do have faith. Interesting. It's impossible not to have faith in, some, not, in something, in themselves, someone else, but it's... it's it's. I'm not even really arguing the yeah. idea of everybody has faith. I'm, 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 my question is, is it a good way to reach a true conclusion? It's a part of it. It's not the sole Okay, way so to there's do other it. things that need to be yeah, supplemented. It gets back again to the intellect again. The mind has to be there. Okay, uh, okay. I mean, I think many times atheists and others criticize Christians for thinking you're all about faith. Mm. Um, you know, theology was once called the queen of the sciences. Uh, did you know that? And no, I didn't. Yeah, it was once called the queen of the sciences. Which queen? Elizabeth? She, <laughs> no, said, no, she had like no, small pops all over her face. It was considered to be the best of the, of the sciences. Now, uh, we've changed the word science 180 years ago to mean something else oh, than what it used to mean. But the thing is, uh, theology and biblical studies is a, uh, is a very um, rigorous intellectual sort of exercise okay and maybe you know people of faith doing that but they they very much use their mind to do this it's not a matter of this false dichotomy between faith and, and, and reason that's a false dichotomy for sure. and, and, and i think you know, have people here throwing the word reason around some of these yeah. organizations and i'm saying well you know yeah, you, you, you you look down at people like me saying well you're working in faith and i'm working from reason no you you're working from re faith too right, right. Uh, you just don't know that you are but you are definitely doing it. i think by, based on how you define it everybody could have faith i don't have a problem with that my question is just if someone came to me and says, "Hey, I use faith to come to a conclusion," this is tales. And that's that's, like, that, that's that's bogus faith. I don't as far understand as how you came yeah. to that. I need a better yeah. way to yeah. determine that's that. That's bogus faith. It might be heads, though. Yeah. It might be. It might be, and there might be a god. But there might be. But believing it's heads. But I need heads, a better system than faith. But believing it's heads doesn't make it heads. It's heads True. whether we believe it or not. It might be heads yeah. whether we believe it or not. Uh, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> we're, we're talking now the ultimate reality here. So I guess what I'm doing is like, can we work together with people who are convinced, and maybe with the people who aren't convinced? Can we have like some sort of system where we can talk to each other, yeah. where we can come up with like a good method to determine how to figure out if something's true yeah. or not? And when we come to an agreement, that's, that's a discussion worth having. I think so too. Yeah. I think so, and I think a lot of times people get so emotionally invested in their conclusions that they aren't willing to have these kinds of. Questions. Oh, I agree with you. Oh yeah. And I appreciate you know like this openness. I think it's nice that people can just come together and just like, this is what I think truth is really what do you think okay well i'll modify it i'm not trying to change your mind but like sure maybe we can like refine it to get to something where it's like okay the next time we come together and like talk about this we'll be on a much closer level with each other and maybe we'll even have a better standard to be able to sure. tell what's true or not true do you have any questions for me no that's good i'll let some of the other guys take over tag team <laughs> yeah uh, let me tell you i've been interviewed by a lot of people and you're one of the best thank I, you I, so I, much i appreciate it. you're good you're you're very fair i Thank I, you. I, I really appreciate your attitude. Okay, okay. It's been a pleasure. I had a wonderful chat with you. Thank you. Too.